Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, January 18th, 2019. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. Jay Book, I mean, losing Mike Jordan was not good for Ohio State's offensive line next year. I mean, but overall, I think Ohio State was pretty fortunate, all things considered, uh, in regards to guys staying or leaving uh, for the NFL. We all knew Dwayne Haskins and Draymond Jones were going to leave. We all knew Mike Weber was going to leave. I mean, I pretty much knew that Kendall Sheffield was going to leave. But, I mean, you get guys like K.J. Hill back. That's huge. I mean, you get guys like Jordan Fuller back. That's huge. And I know some fans don't like Damon Arnett, but I think that's really good for depth. Uh, Malik Harrison, there was some talk he might go pro. I mean, all those guys coming back. I think all things considered, this is probably best-case scenario for Ohio State, Jay Book. I agree. The one thing that you have to really be excited about, this is the first time in years that the defensive backfield will come back um, with the same starter, with pretty much the same starters minus Sheffield. If you look at uh, the last several years, you have several guys departing uh, for the NFL. And because of that, you saw a lot of youth back there, which caused a lot of mental breakdowns. You're going to be fielding pretty much uh, your, your, your defensive backfield as well as your linebacker core, who's going to be back on the back seven ends. So that experience is going to be uh, it's extremely valuable. As you mentioned, I know a lot of fans are not very high on Damon Arnett, but anytime you can get another corner uh, to cover, I'll take that all day, every day. Hopefully with the, the new coaching and the new defensive back coaches, uh, his game will, will be elevated to the next level, and hopefully we can see Jordan Fuller getting back to his all-Big Ten type of level. But I'm excited about it. This is probably the first time in uh, – several years that you haven't just seen a huge mass exodus of guys to the NFL. So even though the defense didn't play to the standards that we wanted to see this past year, just having those guys back with valuable reps under your belt can't be understated. Yeah, and let's look at the offensive line. We'll talk a little recruiting in a moment out there, listeners. Well, let's look at the offensive line for Ohio State going into the next season. I mean, obviously, if – uh Brandon Bowen can come back healthy, and it looks like he will as a fifth-year senior. That would be huge. Um, I mean, they really only have one returning starter with Thayer Munford as far as anybody who started more than two games last year. Wyatt Davis is kind of a returning starter because he started an obviously big game, started in the Big Ten Championship game against Northwestern, starting the Rose Bowl against Washington. So Wyatt Davis is kind of a returning starter. You know, Josh Allaby started a little bit, um, but um, – when you look at this offensive line next year, just uh, do you think it can come together and be a pretty good unit, or how big of a concern is this for you? I actually think it can be uh, a good unit. You had a lot of reserve guys get uh, valuable reps in there. As you mentioned, Wyatt Davis, I thought he played really well uh, when he was in there, and just getting him back there in that starting lineup is going to be pretty big. I know a lot of people aren't very high on Stud, but you have to give Stud uh, a little bit of credit for at least getting those backup guys ready to play. As you mentioned, Josh Allaby, I thought he played really well at the left tackle spot. I'm not sure he's um, really a left tackle. He may be a guard with his size, but he still held up the fight. He did it extremely well. Um, the thing that I'm, I'm really curious to see play out is how MPF, the, fr- the highly touted five-star freshman, where is he going to fit at in this uh, rotation, and then as well as who's going to be the the starting center replacing Mike Jordan, who's going to keep the streak alive of all American uh, centers from Ohio State. So I I think that's going to be something to keep an eye on. But I think uh, just getting Thayer back uh, and just finding the five miss the five missing uh, the f- I'm sorry fi- finding the five guys who's going to be able to jail is going to be important. Obviously, if, if Bowen is back. Uh, is going to be a huge boost with his experience and his size in there. So I'm very bullish on the offensive line, and it's just going to be a stud can continue to develop those guys to the next level. Yeah, speaking of the stud, he he better land Doug Nestor, right? I mean, this is <laughs> I guess that's one of the big reasons I, everybody was like saying, well, stud. That was, you know, if they lose stud, they might not get Doug Nestor. 
Um, you know, I'm, it's it's a lot more than stud. I get that. But uh, what do you think is going to happen with Doug Nestor from everything you're hearing? You think Doug Nestor will be a Buckeye? Yeah, last week we we had talk and, and there was a lot of smoke that Stud could be could be headed to Maryland and obviously he's going to be staying on the staff. So as far as Nestor on the recruiting front, you really have to like Ohio State chances there. It seems like the 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 pendulum has swung back towards the Buckeyes because he was looking to take some visits. He canceled that Georgia visit. Uh, so I like where Ohio State's at right now. And a lot of people mentioned if Stud goes, then that's going to greatly affect the, the 2020 recruiting, which is off to a hot start. So I think uh, if, if Stud can really get those guys planned, I think he has a place on his staff. Uh, the thing for Ohio State right now is they absolutely need numbers coming up in his next recruiting class when it comes to the offensive line. They're off to a pretty good start right now, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Yeah, and Dewan Jones, big guy out of Indy, my man. I mean, Dewan Jones, what, like 6'8", like 380 or something? Three, I think maybe he's lost, but he's down to like 360. He he's went on massive. a diet. Uh, he went on the, the, the Just Bacon diet and lost a, a few 20, uh, 20 pounds. But uh, I, I hope he's a Buckeye. I mean, why not? I mean, we need uh, offensive linemen. I mean, Dewan Jones, what are your thoughts on that, Jay Book? He's, he's huge, absolutely massive. As, as you mentioned, 6'8". You know, probably you know three sixty on the on a good day. Uh, it, it's just going to be uh, getting him in a fold and getting him in shape. He's obviously going to be someone that's going to be uh, that's going to need coached up and hit the weight room. But if you look at his offer list, he has pretty much the who's who in, in college football when it comes to his offers. I was looking at it. You know, he had a, a ton of SEC schools, all the major powerhouses, the LSU's and the Florida States and uh, you going down the line, Texas. So if, if a house that can land him, he may not have the high power uh, star rankings that a lot of fans are accustomed to. But if you can find a big man that can move at six eight, um, pushing three sixty, three seventy, then I will sign. I will sign that guy up because if, if they can coach him up. You never know what can happen. He can be an absolute ball player. Ohio State has absolutely made a killing when it comes to three-star offense alignments, uh, getting the most out of them. And I think this kid has the potential. You can't teach size, and he absolutely has that in folds. Yeah, if he was left to his own devices, maybe it wouldn't be a good situation. But with Coach Mick, I, I think uh, I like the idea of Dewan Jones to Ohio State a lot. Um Let's let's uh, turn the page to Urban Meyer for a moment. Um, news broke yesterday that he's going to sign a contract with Fox Sports to be a college football analyst. No surprise there. Um, talk about that a little bit, but even more importantly, Jay Book, um, do you think Urban Meyer will coach again? I don't think he's going to coach again. Uh, I know he recently did an a interview, and he said uh, pretty much either uh, the sis needs to go or he's going to have to deal with uh, an unhappy family because they're really happy with him uh, being at home. So I think he's going to stay in the booth and find other things to occupy his time. And, man, give this guy a standing ovation for signing for Fox to, to, to be an analyst considering how bad ESPN uh, did him over the summer and Amen. how they drug how they drug his name through the mud. And there was a lot of people thinking like, oh, he's probably going to go back to ESPN and, and be an analyst there. And, and kudos to him just going to Fox and thumbing his nose to ESPN because they were absolutely without a heartbeat sign him up again. And it will be kind of interesting to see him face to face with a lot of those critics and naysayers who pretty much try to run him over with a bus all summer, but just getting him uh, in the booth with Fox and calling games and just having him around football is going to be good for college football as well as Ohio State fans. All right, let's, last thing here on the five-ish, the Friday five-ish, let's delve deep into the running backs for 2019. I know that's a hot topic amongst fans. I mean, the Buckeyes are fortunate. They have uh, J.K. Dobbins coming back as a junior. He's already 18th on the career rushing list over 2,400 yards. If he gets over 1,000 yards in 2019, he will be just the second running back in Ohio State history, second player period, to go over 1,000 yards in three different seasons, joining someone named Archie Griffin. So they got Dobbins. They've got Jamari McCall. And I will say, I don't think Dobbins was that good in 2018. I'll just put it out there. I don't think Dobbins was that good in 2018. Yeah, maybe it wasn't like set up for him very well, but I still don't think he was that good. But still, it's good he's coming back, obviously. 
Um, and Damari McCall is all the, way, all the way a running back, talking to Tony Alford. He's not like going back and forth between the running back room and the wide receiver room. He's a running back period. Master T coming back. I think Brian Sneed's gone. Probably by the time this podcast airs, knowing our luck, Brian Sneed will already be uh, announced that he's gone. But from what I'm hearing, he's definitely gone. Um, you got the incoming guys with Steel Chambers and Marcus Crowley. Uh, your thoughts on the running back situation, Jay Book? You bullish on this group? Are you concerned? Just your thoughts on this group? I, I think there's a, obviously experience with Dobbins, but a, a lot of the younger guys are really going to have to show what they're made of. I'm really excited that Demario McCall is going to be there full time because I think he's a player that absolutely needs the football in his hands. I truly believe Demario McCall uh, is a guy that you can use in the Alvin Kamara role. He has that type of skill set where he can be a Swiss Army knife. He's not the biggest guy. Asking him to run between the tackles, yeah, he can do it, and he'll he'll load that shoulder and give somebody uh, that boom if he has to. But just getting him on the perimeter, but using the skill set of his being able to go out in the backfield and catch passes, I think could be something that you see out of the Ohio State offense. Dobbins absolutely needs to pick it up this year. Um, you could say something in regards to the offensive line really not living up to the standards. That's what That could be a reason why he struggled, but I, I'm looking for him to have a bounce back. I'm still very high on Master T. I think he's a guy that uh, if given the opportunity can show that he can be uh, a potential move to change guy. Uh, I think his running style is interesting. He's a little upright, but his his foot speed is pretty darn good for considering he's pushing 225. He's going to be the biggest back on the roster. So spring ball uh, is going to be something to keep an eye on between those guys. If, if you had to ask me today, I think it would be uh, Dobbins and Demario McCall as your one-two punch there and sprinkling in a little master Teague when they can. But I, I think these guys have tremendous potential, but I think if they can – properly utilized Demario McCall is going to be the wild card because if he can play that Alvin Kamara role, I don't think there's a linebacker in the Big Ten that can check him one-on-one. Great stuff as always from Jonah Booker. Thank you very much, Jay Book. You can catch him on Twitter at jbook37. I mean, if you're on Twitter, you're not following him already. What are you doing? <laughs> at jbook37. Thank you very much to Jonah Booker and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great day and a great weekend. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Bye.